I don't know how many branches there are in Muslim. Well, Islam, is, Islam is one. It's one, right? It's all okay, what's on so the text. Cool. What do you call, what do you call um, like the, the senior, like the reviewers? The scholars. Scholars. How are they interpreting the script? Are they more like, a, or, like a orange scholars? Or are they more adapting the interpretation according to, you know, like modern times? So, so the Quran is divine word, right? Meaning that this is not the words of any man. It is, in our belief, the words of God. Okay? So we don't change it, unlike other people. We don't give it a modern interpretation. But we do have a concept called Qiyas. Okay? Qiyas is that when you look at an original ruling and you derive a new ruling in modern times from it. I'll give you an example. The Quran tells us to stay away from alcohol completely. Okay? Today we may have meth or heroin. My understanding is that in Quran it says to not abuse alcohol. So no, there are three stages of alcohol being forbidden in the Quran, right? The last of them says stay away from it completely. Okay, okay? But, but, but how come then? You know, so is it your teaching that alcohol should be completely? Yes, completely not used. But then what about the two other stages? So, so the Quran is revealed in stages, right? Over 23 years, right? If originally the Quran came and said, you cannot fornicate, you cannot drink alcohol, you cannot steal, you cannot do that, which was common, it would be very difficult for the people to give it up. So the first thing was that, they, that you do not go to the prayer while you're drunk, right? So it's the first stage. Then the next stage came that there's benefits and there are harms, but the harms are more. And the last stage came that completely stay away from it, right? And with the Quran, we have the explanation of what we call hadith, okay? Hadith are the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, explaining the Quran and rulings and so on. So in hadith, then we get the, const the contextual uh, background, what we call asbab al-nuzul, what was going on when those verses were revealed. What you find from terrorism and things like this is because they're not scholars. Those people are people like you will find uh, Buddhist organizations that have, that have gassed uh, subway stations before. You will find Christians like the IRA who blow up malls. When I was in England, they blew out of malls, right? You will find uh, Hindu background people like the Tamil Tigers blowing things up, kamikazes. People use certain things or misuse them for their political goals. But Muslim scholars have always understood the Quran through the ahadith and the, the, the science, which is called tafsir, of explaining. So, sure. What does the Quran say about man and woman? What about man and woman? Is it more like a woman should belong in a house, in a kitchen? Take no, 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 no. The Quran, does not, the Quran does not talk about women being in kitchens or anything. The Quran says that Allah created men and women. Right? And Allah says about the good men, the good that they do, and the women, the good that they do, they will both be rewarded. Right? So men and women have their own place, have their own place in society. The Quran doesn't talk about kitchens and things like this, but the Quran does tell us that men were there to lead a household. If you look at the natural, what we call fitra, right? You see, uh, for example, men will be hunter-gatherers, they will go out, they will go and hunt, like in nature, right? Women will. Uh, at the same time have their own responsibilities. Doesn't mean that one is better than the other or one, uh, uh, like for example, many of the uh, wives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to accompany him in battles. They used to go with him even out to the battlefield, right? Uh, I'm not saying that they were taking swords and fighting and things, but they were accompanying Can him. Can you explain the veil to me? Sure. What is so, the, is sure. It a, well, why is it only in certain countries? It's not just in certain countries. You will feel, I find it in America, you will find it in China, in Japan, in Africa. Uh, it's not about country or culture. But in some it's, countries it's enforced more strictly, right? Well, it depends on the government of the country, but in, in hardly any country is it enforced by the government. Even in Saudi Arabia now, the government has said it's a personal choice. But women continue to wear it in countries like the US or in China where, where, where there's no enforcement of it, but they choose it because it's a way of honor. For example, in the Quran, it doesn't say that a woman is oppressed with it. A woman is known as a woman of honor from it. Meaning today, if you look at, and we'll just be very honest, right? If you look at the people walking here, when they see a woman in a small bikini and things like this, you know and I know that a lot of lustful thoughts will come out from them. They will not judge her on her intellect 
or how nice she is. They will judge her on her appearance, right? In Islam, we don't want we don't want that for women. We want women to be judged for their personality, for their honor. We don't want people just looking at their size and wondering this and that. Rather, like what you like, you were dressed modestly. I'm listening to what you're saying, so I'm appreciating your mind, your thoughts, and that's how Islam honors women. You see? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? So, um, it's a, there's a coach. That coach for what? Like MMA. Okay. His name is Pras Zahabi. No, I don't, I don't, a, I don't watch he's, MMA. He's a Muslim. Okay, mashallah. Uh, he's, a, he's a PhD in philosophy. Nice. So a lot of, um, of the ideas I got from him. Just, just curious if you... I don't know him. I know Khabib. I don't know him personally, <laughs> but I watched a couple of fights and he seems like he can fight. Yeah. 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 Okay, is there anything else you recommend me taking? Sure, I would I definitely... I, 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 I... I need to read more to be able Excellent. to... Excellent. Well, we're, we're not here to force anybody. We're here to open up a door of communication. So this is a good intro book. Um, about? About Islam, just generally about Islam and the Islamic belief, women, about Jesus, about science and the Quran and so on. So I would start there. And then as you, you know, go from there, you have the Quran already. Um, anything else you got? That you're interested in? No, I am. Um, it's great. It's good. I just um, it annoys me sometimes when I see like Hollywood movies and yeah. shows that depicts Muslim in, in that very specific way. Thank you. I appreciate it. It annoys us more. <laughs> yeah. We, we we get we get typecasted. We get we get. I mean, as Muslims, if you if you only 14 percent of Muslims are Arab, but if you go to Hollywood, you would think all of us are Arab. You know, less than 0.0003 percent of Muslims are terrorists. If you look at the definition from the FBI, but if you look at Hollywood, you would think there's 1.8 billion Muslims according to 2015 research. 2015. So I mean, today it's more than that. But people don't realize the biggest Muslim country population is Indonesia. But people here in the street, so we get that negative image. And I appreciate people like you who, instead of just buying into the hype, you're here and you're talking and you're going to read. And please, we're here on Sundays. Come back. I'll give you the. Literally for a conversation. This is the address to the mosque. If you have any questions, feel free. Um, I can get you an email address if you prefer. Um, let me return. Excellent. Thank you. So, thank you so much. If you have any more questions, come on back. I will give that. Is how the media can take us in a bad light.